Welcome to another exciting Bible study with Reverend Dr. James A. Duncan, pastor of Shiloh Baptist Church. Faith study in the Word is designed to keep you fired up about your walk with the Lord. Fired up about our faith study in the Word with Pastor Duncan, Duncan, author, teacher, and long-term educator with a burning desire to see every believer live a full life of faith in the redeeming power of God. This can only happen when we develop a hunger and thirst for studying the Word, God's Word. Thanks for joining us in tonight's study. Praise the Lord, family. Surprise, surprise. Pastor Duncan and I have been discussing some things and because of the new year, he has a lot of work to do. So I'm going to be with you for the next three sessions. And uh, I'm just excited about being here. I hope that uh, time together won't be wasted. I pray that you're going to learn something. And I'm just glad to be here. And for those who may not know me, my name is Pastor Cable Brown. I am the assistant pastor here at Shalom Baptist Church. We've been together on devotions. But now I have the opportunity to be with you doing Bible study, something we haven't done for a while. So this. Bear with me, and we're going to have a good time in the Lord. I believe you're going to learn something tonight that's going to make your life better. 2020 has been crazy. We know that. But you know what? Every year, we always say, when the new year comes in, my life is going to get better. In 2005, we're going to keep hope alive. In 2004, I'm hoping for more. All that stuff. And in, 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 in spite of all that, many of us have been living the same life the same way, having the same things, not just for weeks or years, but for decades for some of us. And so I was praying and asking God, what is, what is the problem? How can we keep receiving the same things over and over again, though we have a desire for something different? And you know, the Lord just dropped in my spirit. He says, because you keep making the same decisions. The same decisions. So tonight, we're going to start our class, this three-week session, this three-week journey. We're going to talk about, Lord, help me make better decisions, the power of choice. There is power in your ability to make a choice. Choices will lead, can sometimes lead to greater things, greater blessings, and sometimes greater regrets. We're going to talk about several things. So because my time is, is short and the sessions are only three, I want to jump right into it, okay? So um, call your friends, call your family, get the youngins, get everybody together, because I believe everybody can learn something from this. Amen? The power of choice. Notice, one of the most powerful things that we can do in life to bring us victory is make good and wise decisions. Do I need to say that again? The power of choice, one of the most powerful things we can do in life to bring us victory is to make good and wise decisions. It's, it's not easy to make decisions. We're going to look at that in a minute. But if we're determined to have a different life, if we're determined to have a different year, a new year, a brighter year, a greater year, we must learn how to make different decisions. And it doesn't matter whether you're young or old, doesn't matter whether you're male or female, we all have a tendency to make the same decision to keep us in the same position. Amen? Look at it. The power of choice. God is giving you and I the ability to choose. Do you understand? He created us in his image. And a part of that image we have been given the ability to make choices. The problem is that oftentimes we make either the same choice or a bad choice. We're going to talk about that. Whether it is right or wrong, the choice is ours to make. You know, so many times we blame other people for the situations that we're in, our circumstances, and sometimes your life may be, somebody may have started your life off in the wrong way, and some, some people have done some terrible things to you. But as you get older, as you learn some things, you can't keep blaming someone else for the trouble that your life is in. It has to come to a point in your life where you say, okay, I've realized I need to make the decisions. I need to make the choice. I cannot leave my life in the hands of somebody else. Amen? I'm going to try to keep my composure because I get a little excited. All right. So, Famous quotes on making decisions, decision making. Famous quotes on decision making. And if I'm going a little bit fast, 
Understand something. We're on tape. <laughs> you can always go back to the tape. Amen? So let's look at this. Napoleon Bonaparte, he said this. I'm going to move over to the other side. He said this. Nothing is more difficult and therefore more precious than to be able to decide. Nothing is more difficult nor precious than to be able to decide. Being given the ability to make a decision for your life is difficult, but it's precious. Theodore Roosevelt said, Roosevelt said this. In any moment, in any moment of decision, the best thing you can do is the right thing. The best thing you can do is the right thing. The next best thing you can do is the wrong thing. And then he said, the worst thing you can do is nothing. Did you hear that? The worst thing you can do is nothing. Why? Because if you do nothing, you stay in the same position. I'm not done yet. Jim Rohn said this. It doesn't matter which side of the fence you get off on sometimes. What matters is most is getting off. You cannot make progress without making decisions. You, if your life is stuck and stagnant, you have not been moving forward in years, and you're complaining, and I'm trying to get on anybody because we're all in the same thing, in the same boat together. I have made, made bad decisions in my life, financially, emotionally, all these things. I made some bad decisions, but I come to the understanding that I can't put my life in the hands of my wife, uh, my, my mom, my sisters, my brothers, my friends. I have to become determined with the help of God to make better decisions. That's why I have to ask, Lord, help me to make better decisions. Amen? Hope you're with me. He said this again. You can't make progress without making decisions. Now, let's look what the Bible has to say. This is Bible study. I know. I know where we're at. Psalms 25 and 12. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him will he instruct in the way that he should choose. Listen, the word instruct means he gives you, he gives you a point. He gives you direction. You see, in life, there's always two paths or more to choose. In actuality, there's really only two paths. One, your way, or God's way. And God says, if you fear me, reverence me, then I will point in the direction that you should choose. Amen? He'll give you the understanding of which path to take. But we must be willing to first recognize that I'm on the wrong road. I'm taking the wrong path. I have consistently taken the wrong path. So he'll help me. But if, I, if I'm not willing to recognize that I have been taking the wrong turn or going in the wrong direction, God says, well, you made that choice. Amen? You made that choice. Notice what else he says. Psalms 32 and 8. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Oh, that's a good one. That's a real good one. You know why? Because he said, not only will I point the direction, I will give you counsel as to how to handle each step of the way. I will give you the understanding as to how to handle every step you take. If you're willing to surrender it to God, God says, I can show you how to walk and show you which way to go. And he says, I will keep my eye upon you. In other words, I'm going to make sure you get where you're supposed to go because your enemy is trying to stop you. There are people out there who are trying to distract you, trying to redirect you. And God says, I got my eye on you. I have my eye on you. Now, that only does that mean he's watching us, but he says, I'm with you. Psalm 46 and 1 tells us that God is a very present help in trouble. Amen? Be thankful that the Lord has his eye on you. Because the devil is trying everything he can to get you to go the wrong direction. And your flesh wants to agree with that. Isaiah 30, 21. And your ears shall hear a word behind you. See, in the context of this passage of Scripture, the people of God had gone in the wrong direction. God had chastised them, but then he says, I'm also going to watch this. He's going to show grace to his people. Mm, let me pause before, before I move on. We make bad decisions 
But God has the ability to redeem our bad decisions. He can take the bad decisions that we make in our life and he can do what he says in his word over Romans 28, 28. I can, I'll make all things work together for good for them who love God. So your decisions are not necessarily fatal. However, if you don't turn those over to God, there could be a, a lifetime of regret. Some decisions, one decision, one bad decision can lead you in a cycle of ups and downs and it seems like everything is going crazy because of one bad decision. I'm going to talk about that. Later on in class, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you a question while I'm here. What is the worst decision that was ever made? I just want you to think about that. Amen? Uh, so now, he says, you, and your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way. Notice, it appears that they were going in the wrong direction. And so God says, I'm going to, there's a word I'm going to speak behind you and tell you this is the way. Walk in it. That's good stuff. When you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, if you're going in the wrong direction, you may have your back turned towards God in, in, in a sense. But God says, I'm going to speak a word behind you to redirect you so you're no longer going in the wrong direction. But you have to make a decision. Who do you want to serve? All right? Matter of fact, here it is, Joshua 24 and 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve Jehovah or to serve the Lord, choose you this day, choose you, this choose, make the choice, this day whom you will serve. He said, whether the gods which were your fathers served that were beyond the river, or the gods of the Ammonites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua had made up his mind. Joshua had made up his mind. I will serve God. Regardless of what you may do, nation of Israel, regardless of what you may do, leaders in Israel, me and my house have already made up my mind. It's already been determined. I don't need anybody else to give me a suggestion. I don't need anybody else to give me any instruction. I already made up my mind. I am going to follow God. The question is, have you? You see, I'm learning something even as I'm getting older, I'm still in a position to learn. And the Lord's been speaking to me. My wife was just talking about this yesterday. God wants us, want us to give everything we have to him. Be totally sold out to him in every way, in every situation. And he wants us, watch this now, to own our lives in this sense. No matter how bad it has been, no matter the mistakes you made, no matter the heartaches you felt, no matter the joys you had, own the whole thing and say, Lord, this is me. I'm not even sure how to even deal with me. But I'm making a decision that I'm turning my whole life over to you. I want to be sold out in 2021. No matter what decisions I made in the past, I want to make better decisions. But I know the only way it's going to work is if I have you empowering me to make those decisions, to make it right. So I must sell out. We've been straddling the fence. Joshua's, I mean, Elijah said, how long will you be hauled between two opinions? Over in 2 Kings chapter 18, when he's at the uh, Mount Carmel, when he's fighting the uh, uh, Baal, the, the prophets of Baal. He said, how long, talking, addressing the congregation, how long are you going to be caught between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be God, serve him. But you've got to make up your mind. 2021 is a day of reckoning. Either you're going to serve God or not. That's, your, that's, that's up to you. Amen. He said, I didn't come here for this. Bro. Don't, don't turn me off. Don't turn me off. Because if you do, I'm going to tell the Holy Spirit, get you. All right? So let's look at this. Why is it so important that we learn to make good decisions? Why is it so important that we learn to make good decisions? I'm so glad you asked. You attended the group tonight. I appreciate that. He says, why? Well, it reveals our character. Decisions to reveal who we are. Amen? Matter of fact, just recently, we witnessed one of the most craziest, most sinful things we've ever seen in our country. 
it was by far the most diabolical thing we could have seen. That where citizens of this country attacked the Capitol. That was a decision based on, watch this, lies that revealed the character of the person who was perpetuating the lie. And the people who bought into it are now paying the price for it. Many have gone to jail because of it. Many have lost their job because of it. But watch this. It's the character flaws within them that reveals who they are, that they even follow a lie. I got to be honest with you tonight. I got to keep it 100. Amen? So let's look at this. The sum of our lives equal the sum of our decisions. The sum of our lives equal the sum of our decisions. Our character is best revealed by the decisions we have made and the impact those decisions had on others, ourselves and others. Understand, every decision we make, well, most decisions we make, depend on the type of decision. Not only impacts you, but impacts the people that's involved in your life. Amen? That's why it's so imperative and such a precious gift God has given us. It's imperative that we make proper decisions, and it's a precious thing that God gave us the ability to make decisions because it affects everybody in our household. We're going to talk about that as we go on. So, it affects our character. It reveals our character, rather. Who we are will determine what we decide to do. Who we are will determine what we, de determine what we decide to do. Our character will dictate what kinds of decisions we make. Amen? Our character will dictate what kind of decisions we make. This is uh, Erwin Lutzer uh, from his book, Making the Best of Bad Decisions. Amen? That's a quote from him. All right? I wish I had said it. I wish I came up with it, but I didn't. All right? He did. Our character is revealed by the types of decisions we make. Also, the consequences are too high. There's a consequence to every decision we make. One bad decision can result in a lifetime of heartache and regret. Just one. One bad decision can, re can result in a lifetime of heartache and regret. Many of us are wondering why we can't get out of this funk, why we can't get out of this depression, this stress, this worry, this anxiety. Ask yourself, have you been making the wrong decision? Or maybe you're suffering from a decision somebody made. Maybe, uh, uh, maybe you have too many credit cards and that's why you can't pay the bills on time. Uh-oh, about to step on somebody's foot. Amen. My wife's in the house, so she waved my hand. She's identifying herself. Yes, she is. <laughs> so, so maybe it's too many credit cards, and maybe, uh, maybe you decided to go ahead and just take and, 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 and you're watching things on TV you shouldn't, and now it's messing with your mind. And now your mind is so polluted with all the other things that you can't even talk to your family family right. That's a decision. That's a decision. Let's move on. It says the consequences are too high. One immoral act, like drunk driving, a hasty marriage, lying, drug use, and the list can go on and on. One immoral act, think about it, drunk driving, person thinking they're fine, veers off the road, hits someone, takes that person's life. They didn't mean to do it, but they were, they, they were impaired because they were drinking. The decision was to drink and drive. If they have made a different decision, if I'm going to drink, I better not drive. Maybe the best thing for me to do is not drink. But because they made that decision, now the, that person's life is gone and the family is suffering because they have no, no longer had that person in their life. And then that person who made the decision to drive has a jail sentence waiting on them. One decision. Maybe a person decides to, uh, they're lying or watch this, or maybe they decide to Listen to someone who lies consistently. The only way to make good decisions is to first have good information. If you have false information, you can't make good decisions. Do you hear what I'm saying? The Bible tells us that we must, we must study and show ourselves approval to God, a work we need not be ashamed, right to divide in the word of truth. Over in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 15. Now, 
The reason why he says this is because we have to train our minds to think differently. We were all born in sin and shape and iniquity, so we all gravitate to sin. We all gravitate to things that are contrary to God. But the Word of God helps us to think different. I have no information I could do different things. But if I consistently live, I listen to a lie, guess what? I will live a lie. Do you hear what I'm saying? All right, I'm going to move on. You say, come on, man, ease up on me, son. No, this, is a, this 2021 is a year reckoning. And, I, and I'm saying this because God has smacked me first. Trust what I'm saying. He smacked me first. Matter of fact, I'm still suffering from the blood. All right? So the consequences are too high. Foolish choices like these can change the trajectory of your life and set it on the course that can have consequences that can outlast your lifetime. Do you? Consequences that can out, Your children may suffer because of it. People connected to you can suffer because you made a bad decision and did not turn this over to God. I told you, God can take and redeem a bad decision. Think about this. When, when uh, uh, Jacob's brothers decided they were going to sell him out, right? When they decided they, wanted, they, well, they were going to kill him at first, they tried to sell him out, and he ended up in prison. He ended up in, uh, in Potiphar's house. He went through all these things. Now, the thing is this. They made bad decisions, but it was God who used their bad decisions to position Jacob in a position of authority. You hear what I'm saying? God can do that. He has done that. But there's times when you have to suffer through it. Look, I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you why. The choice is yours. I know the font's kind of small, so I'm going to read this out loud. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corrupt, corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will reap from the Spirit eternal life. It all depends on what seeds you're sowing. Are you sowing to the Spirit of God or are you sowing to your flesh? If you're sowing to the Spirit of God, God says you're going to reap eternal life. You understand what that means? Not just eternal life in heaven, but even now. You receive the blessings and the promises of God because of because you're you're walking in the Spirit and you and you're sowing to the Spirit. God says you're going to reap a harvest of blessing because you're determined to do what God said. You made a choice, like Joshua did. Me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You have to make a determination. Do it today. Why are you waiting to sell out to God? Think about this. And I'm going off script for a little bit. Think about this for a moment. You've been receiving the same thing for so long, you think that's where you're supposed to be. And God says, no. If you accepted Jesus Christ, he, said, he says that, watch this, all things become new. You become new in Christ, a new spirit. You can have a new mind. You can have a new purpose. You have a new direction. But you have to make a different choice. You have to choose to serve the Lord. It's not going to just fall in uh, uh, automatically. Choosing to serve God is not, as we read from uh, one of the quotes, that decisions make, decision making is hard. But once you make the decision, make the determination, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He gives you the power to do it. You better hear what I'm saying. The Holy Spirit will empower you to do what God called you to do and to live the way God called you to live. I know it. I'm a witness. Amen? Amen. So this is Galatians 6, 7 to 8. Galatians 6, 7 8. Write that down. Read that. I know we quote it, but I, I know for a fact that just because we quote something don't mean we're walking in. Amen, somebody. I'm learning as I go along. Reading is not enough. Praying is not enough. Just saying I'm worshiping is not enough. Matter of fact, there's a song, an old song by Angela and Veronica, and they said this, um, it's not the way I it's not the way I sing, it's not the way I worship, it's not the way I pray that you, that you know I love you. It's the way I live. It's the way I live will show whether I love you or not. We have to be loving. If we really want the blessings of God, we must learn to love God. And in loving God, we must sell out to God. Amen? The choice is yours. Again, small fun. Uh, 
I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life. He said, the choice is yours. Choose life. He says uh, that you and your so that you and your offspring, excuse me, may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying His voice, and holding Him fast, fast, holding fast to Him, selling out, holding fast to Him, selling out. And He is your life and a length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers and to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them. God made some promises. This is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, 20. God made some promises to you through the word of God. He wants to fulfill every promise. Every promise in Christ Jesus is yes and amen. But many times we forsake those promises or we miss out on the promises, we miss out on the blessings of God simply because we make the wrong choice. Do you, hear my, do you hear what I'm saying? It's not the devil. It's not, it's not mama. It's not the people around you on your job. It's you and I making a decision that I want what God has for me. And I'm not, I'm choosing life. Amen. Because the only other alternative is that curse would come. And um, no thanks. I don't need that. Seven ways we make bad decisions. The seven ways we make bad decisions. The first one, we make them too fast. <laughs> we make decisions too fast. We got to stop sometime and just think before we act. Amen, somebody. We have to stop and ask, is this the right thing to do? You see, I have some scripture along with this. So instead of acting or making them too fast, be patient. Psalm 37 and 7. Look what he says here. Psalms 37. I hope you're writing these scriptures down again because you're on tape. You can always go back and look at this and make sure you don't miss anything. Amen? Psalms 37 and 7, 7 and 9. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are of evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. Hmm. Wait patiently. That does not mean sitting around waiting patiently that, that does not give a picture of you biting your fingernails, waiting by the phone, hoping for somebody to call you, standing by the mailbox. Am I going to get that check? Am I getting my stimulus check? You know, no, that's not, that's not what God says. No, that's not how you wait on God. You wait on God by serving him while you're waiting for God to show up and deliver you from whatever situation you may be asking him to deliver you from. But it must first begin with a determination, a choice that I am going to do what God says. See, sometimes we want God to do what we want him to do without being willing to do what he says. Now, does that make sense? Think about it. You know, uh, some, my kids, they, you know, when they were younger, and my grandkids in particular, they like to barter, bargain, okay? As if, you know, you do this for me, I do that for you. Or if you tell them to do something, well, what, which basically, not so many words, they want to know what you're going to do for them. And I grew up in an era when, if my mom and dad said something, there wasn't no bartering, there wasn't no begging, there wasn't no trying to figure out how to finagle a way around it. It was either you do it or you want to get, you know, my dad told y'all before, my dad knew how to use a belt. He was an expert in it. I think he was a martial artist in that thing. All right? So, um, today we will sit here and we'll, we'll allow children to bargain with us to, to try to finagle their way around certain things. God says no. He's not like us. He wants us to obey him. To do what he says. He's like he told the, uh, the children of Israel over in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 32. He says uh, if you hearken diligently, diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God he said all these blessings shall come upon you. And he started labeling a name and the blessing that will come. 
But they first must listen. They must choose to obey. God says the blessing, the real blessing come in, in the obedience. James said it like this. He says, uh, be not just hearers of the words only, but be ye doers of the word. Be the blessing come in the doing. Amen. If you're at home watching this, I hope you're hitting the like button. But right now, say this to yourself. The blessing comes in the doing. Amen. So, let's look at another. The seven ways. We make them too fast and we make them too slow. You say, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, Pastor. What do you mean? You just said we make them too fast. Sometimes, God is telling us to move now. Make the decision to move now. But what we do is we want to think about it. We want to, uh, you know, debate about it. Like, for instance, God tells you to forgive somebody who just offended you. Oh, wait a minute, hold up. Let me think about it. Even though the Bible says do unto others as you would have them do unto you, we want to think about doing what God said do. Because of the level of offense against us. He looked at me, said something I didn't like, called me out my name. Oh, wait a minute, hold up. Pump your brakes. Forgive? Maybe after I smack him. No, no, no. God says you have to act when he tells us to. We can't wait. Sometimes we're too slow in making decisions. Look what he says over here in uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 24. And this one is good because it talks about the sluggard. The sluggard who uh, you can tell when somebody is just basically moseying along through life, not taking care of their property, property, not taking care of themselves, not taking care to make sure that they're diligent in the word of God. This is doing whatever they feel like and is not leading to anything prosperous. Look what he says about the sluggard. That's a, that's a person who moves too slow. Amen? I went past the field of the sluggard. This is verse 30 of chapter 24 of Proverbs. I went past the field of the sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who, had, who has no sense. <laughs> Look what the Bible says. He has no sense. It don't, it's like he's not thinking. All right? He says, thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds. And the stone wall was in ruins. His property was falling apart. Amen? The slugger, the one who moved too slow. Right? He says, and I applied my heart to what I observed. Here's Solomon saying, I learned something from this. And I learned a lesson that, uh, from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come upon you like a thief. And scarcity like an armed man. Before you, in this, in this passage of scripture, the person who moved too slow, the slugger, who didn't take care of his property, before he knew it, he lost everything and don't even know how. It was like somebody came along and robbed him. But the reality was that he never got up and made a move. He decided to go ahead and move through life too slow, not making a decision, not making any determination, and just let things grow the way they would naturally without directing his life. Now, I know there are many out there right now who, who at the sound of my voice, who know people like this. Maybe it's not you, but you know somebody like that. You see their life in disarray, and you wonder when they're going to make the decision to get up out of that. 2021 is a day of reckoning. Either we're going to do the will of God or we're not. Plain and simple. But understand, there are consequences to the choice that we make. We could always make the choice, but we can't choose our consequences. We're going to talk about that later on because my time is almost up, so I know where I'm at. We make them while we're angry. That's the worst time to make a decision. Well, the worst time when you're grieving. When you're angry and you're grieving, those are two worst times you should make a decision. That's when you should, and over in Ephesians 4, 26, talk about uh, 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 that the, uh, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun settle on your wrath. Because you see, the wrath of man does not work the will of God. So, um, 
it's not the right time to make a decision when you're angry. Matter of fact, if you are engaged in a conversation, you and your spouse, you and the kids, maybe some co-workers on the job, and you're angry, the best thing for you to do is do this. If you have to, put your hand on your mouth. Don't say anything. Because when you're angry, you're going to say something that you're probably going to regret. Now, once the words are out, once the once the outer atmosphere, you can't snatch them back. You can't say, oh, I'm sorry. No, they're going to tell you that was in you. The Bible says other brothers are heart and mouth speak. So that must have been in you. You've been wanting to say that for a long time. Call me out my name like that. Now, you can say, oh, look, I was angry. I'm sorry. Hey, that's all good. That's all fine and dandy. But it's already said. It's already done. The tongue is like a flaming fire. Once you put something in the atmosphere, it can set a course, set a pathway for your life to become out, out of control because you're angry. Don't make a decision while you're angry. Stand still. Know that he's God. Listen for his voice. Get somewhere until you're calm and when you're quiet and you can think through the process. Because if you're angry and make a decision, more than likely you're going to have some problems down the road. Amen? Two more. Make them, uh, don't make them, one of the problems is that we make our decisions alone. The Bible says in multitude of the counselors, there's wisdom. Sometimes you have to bring other people in. Help me understand something. I need you praying with me on this. I don't know which direction to go. I know God wants me to make a move, but I'm uncertain where I should go. So can you help me by praying with me? And if you can trust that person, notice what I said. If you can trust that person, then I would suggest you share with them. But they have to be somebody you know will not take your vision and run with it, destroy it, or try to distract you, or try to watch it depress you by saying, oh, do you think that's going on? you really think God's going to do that? Know who you're sharing your dreams with. Know who you're sharing your heart with. But you need to share because making a decision by yourself, oftentimes you don't have enough information to see the other sides of what that decision can do. Amen? And here's the last one. Make them not as a reaction or retaliation. Often when we're mad, we want to retaliate. Or we make a decision by reacting. Somebody says something, boom, I'm right back at it. Somebody do look at me funny, boom, I'm right back at it. God says, wait a minute, stop. Stop, stop. Before you make a determination, before you, before you react, stop. Stand still and know that I'm God. God says that word stand still means that just, just shut up. That's what it means, to just shut up and know that I'm God. God knows how to handle this. Amen? So my time has, is running out, so I would like, before I go, I have three minutes left. Before we go, I want to say, please be with us next week because it's only going to get better. I told you we're going to talk about what is the worst decision. What do you think is the worst decision that was ever made? We're going to talk about that. But And lastly, the, the last portion of the class, we're going to talk about how can God help me make better decisions. It's in the Word. God's Word gives us the ability to make better decisions. So remember our devotional services every, every day, uh, five days out of the week at 8 o'clock. We have, we have some fantastic ministers and preachers who are out here sharing the word, and they just want to encourage you throughout your day. Remember our kingdom kids, they're out here and they're, they're doing great things. Our, our young adults, they're really growing and they're showing that they're part of not the church of tomorrow, but the church of right now. So please spend some time with us. Remember to pray for us. We're going to be praying with you. We love you. We're here for you. And God bless you. See you next week. Amen.